Hi everybody and welcome back to Lecture 5, Technology Scaling. We're now going to go on to the fourth and final part of this lecture, which is called Current and Future Trends. So when we discuss trends in VLSI, trends in uh, chip design, we usually go to the ITRS, the International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors. This is a body that was started in 1998 to predict the future of the semiconductor industry. And you can see here, um, they usually put a biannual uh, summary out of what the, what the predictions are for the future. Um, and you can see here their prediction from uh, 2009, I guess, um, which uh, shows what they, what they think that the gate uh, dimensions are going to be across the years from 2009 at a 20 nanometer gate to 14 nanometers, 10 nanometers, 7 nanometers in 2018, and 5 nanometers in 2021. So it's not far from what actually happened. And then they have different um, tables all along their, uh, their biannual report. For instance, what the supply voltage is going to be going from 1 volt scaling down to about uh, 0.65 volts uh, in 2021. The number of transistors on a die going from 1.5 transistor in 2009, reaching up to 24.7 in 2021. We've already passed that. Wiring levels from 12 wiring levels going up to 15. There are chips with even more than that. And maximum power you see should be stuck around 200 uh, watts. There are chips, um, lots of these graphics cards and so forth that go way beyond this, up to 400 watts even. But uh, usually we try not to pass this 200 watt point. DRAM capacity going up to 32 gigabytes. Flash capacity going up to 256 gigabytes. Um, that is an old prediction by the ITRS. The thing is that the ITRS was retired. In fact, Fact, it was turned into ITRS 2.0 and um, recently they changed the name to the International Roadmap for Devices and Systems, the IRDS. It's actually a new initiative but uh, that was started in 2016 but it's actually the successor of the ITRS. Um, so now they put out this report and the last one came out in uh, 2018. Um, published in 2019 and again if you go through on their website you can download um, different different um, notes that show the different predictions and the different states of the industry and what's being used and what they predict to go on and you can see here just one of these tables that I took out of one of the PDFs over there um, just discussing for instance the 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 node range labeling which is seven five three two point one and so forth um, is that exactly the gate size? That's a good question, and we'll discuss that a little bit. But um, in general, it's just the name of the node, 7 uh, N7 or 7 nanometers and so forth. Okay, um, the logic device that's going to be there, FinFETs, um, gate all-around devices, lateral gate all-arounds, vertical gate all-arounds, and so forth. Um, the VDDs that are going to be scaling, gate length, number of stack tiers, stack devices, um, SOC area, different things like that, frequency scaling, and so forth. So um, it's very interesting to go and look at these uh, different reports and see what is uh, the current state and what is predicted for the future. If you go and look at uh, the roadmaps of the actual foundries, you can see some of the leading foundries in the world, Intel, Samsung, TSMC, Global Foundries, SMIC, and UMC. And you can see from 2015 to 2021, IC Insights put together this table that shows what type of, uh, um, what type of nodes that they're going to be doing. Intel um, is well known for um, kind of getting stuck in the 14 nanometer node. Last year, they came out with some products that have a uh, good enough yield in 10 nanometers, but they are actually uh, claim that they're on track to go over to 7 nanometers um, next year, um, which is uh, important for them because they kind of uh, fell behind the race to TSMC and Samsung. TSMC and Samsung have both been putting out 7 nanometer chips for quite some time now. Um, 7 nanometer plus, which is EUV, and 5 nanometers, which is already an EUV. Um, TSMC has recently started uh, production of a, a 3 nanometer fab and a 2 nanometer fab. They put a lot of money into that. And Samsung is right on, uh, right behind them. Global Foundries, which uh, kind of took two um, directions. One going for uh, the FDSOI types of processes. They're, they have a process called 22FDX, which is their 22 nanometer process. And they have a 12 nanometer FinFET. But um, it seems that Global Foundry has uh, left the... The, um, uh, the continuous scaling track, and they're going to st stop for right now at least at 12 nanometers with their FinFETs. And SMIC and UMC are quite far there behind. 
Um, when, when we discussed this going all the way uh, back to like 2006 or so, we, we gave names to these different types of uh, technology strategy roadmaps. And there are basically four plans of doing it. They kind of mix and match a little bit. But the first plan is extending Silicon CMOS. The second plan is subsystem integration. You see that we have some 3D stacking over here. And the third plan is the post-Silicon uh, CMOS options. Uh, finally, we have quantum computing, which we can call plan Q because it's a completely different approach. Um, this is shown today on the IRDS website, still this kind of famous uh, type of uh, a plot that shows uh, the different types of integration uh, or plan, plans going forward. So the first one, Plan A, extending Silicon CMOS, um, which we go down in this direction, that's continuous scaling, uh, or we also call it more and more because we're continuing Moore's law. So we have more and more. There's continuous mini uh, miniaturization, and we have this going down into uh, one nanometer or whatever in uh, in the future roadmap. Okay. The second uh, way of looking at it, which we called subsystem integration over here, it, uh, is commonly called more than more. So instead of continuously scaling, we stay at older, ma more mature nodes, but we make specialized processes for doing certain things, analog RF, passives, high voltage power sensors, actuators, biochips, etc. Um, these things may be found in um, older technologies. And if we integrate several chips together, for, exa for example, in 3D integration, um, we're, we're able to get the best of both worlds, both the scaling, which gives us the high speed logic and high, uh, high density memory and so forth with the um, mature processes that are specialized for different things such as image sensors and so forth. The third one, post uh, silicon CMOS options, is, is also called Beyond More. So some of the things I'll be discussing in the next few slides actually um, kind of mix Beyond More with More More. So there are different ways that aren't necessarily silicon to um, uh, continue scaling and continue um, all kinds of things, Beyond More or Beyond CMOS. That's the, the, the third option. And the fourth option, quantum computing, we'll discuss at the end. That's a completely different approach to scaling and to technology continuization. IMEC is a, a very important research institute uh, in Belgium. Um, they kind of lead uh, the world into the research of what the, the next uh, technologies are going to be and so forth. And they put out at different uh, top conferences such as ISSCC and IEDM what they view the next uh, device is going to be. Um, a lot of the different foundries such as Intel, uh, TSMC, Samsung and so forth base their technology on what iMac develops. So um, here is a view of I uh, uh, an iMac view of scaling uh, forward uh, down to the one nanometer node. And you can see that they have all these developments from FinFET being introduced around 16 nanometers, even though Intel had it already at 22. Um, uh, extreme ultraviolet at 7 to 5 nanometers. Uh, nano sheets at 4 to 3 nanometers. Fork sheets at 2 nanometers. Complementary FETs at, at 1 nanometer, as we'll discuss in a, in a moment. So actually, IMEC uh, put out this year at IEDM a uh, big, um, they discussed what is known as the fork sheet transistor. So, I, uh, so IMEC looking forward, um, we're right now at the FinFET uh, stage. So FinFETs are these uh, types of fins that we have. This is the source or drain that goes through this thing. And the, um, the gate goes over this. And it gives us like three uh, sides of a gate. Um, Intel calls it a tri-gate transistor. So this is the FinFET device. Um, that is, again, not enough. We want to have better control over the channel, better electrostatics. We want to have something that's a gate all around device. And currently, what's going uh, for about five or three nanometers is what they call the nano sheet gate all around device, or GAA um, NS. Okay, the, and here you can see that it's kind of like a fin fit, but they split the pieces in the middle. So you have um, these sheets. Uh, that current flows through and they're really controlled on all four sides so it's a real gate all around device. Um, what was just uh, announced a couple months ago is this fork sheet device where you can actually have a PMOS and an NMOS on uh, two sides of the same transistor and you can get um, further scaling. Um, the, the next stage uh, which is still in the future is called a complementary FET or a CFET device where you stack the CMOSs and NMOSs on top of each other um, in, in a 3D fashion and then you you get even better scaling uh, of the transistor. Here we can see some um, the nano sheet device, which is actually a reality. It's already happening nowadays. So you can see the nano sheets. Here are some um, pictures. This is from IBM a couple of years ago. 
What about back-end technology? So there's a lot of innovations going on uh, there too. So uh, starting here on the left, we have the buried power rails where you can see that VDD and VSS are buried underneath the silicon. Um, th that way we can uh, uh, route them, route them throughout the whole chip without actually taking up room that we may need for um, scaling and for closer integration of, uh, of uh, the devices and get better IR drop and so forth. Uh, another thing is what they call a super via. So you can see that instead of a via going from one metal layer to the next metal layer through uh, uh, some sort of a plug um, and then going to the next metal layer if we want to go through several metal layers we can use this super via it gets better resistance better density etc okay um, interconnect so we said that we're using copper interconnect for quite a few years now they have uh, better materials now that they're trying to come up with this RU material which is barrierless we don't need to put a barrier between it and the silicon and that can get it better density better resistance and so forth so that's the next uh, stage that we're, uh, is going to an interconnect and something that's already been happening since 14 nanometers is this air gap interlayer dielectric where actually between the uh, metals we can stick an air gap in there which has really low K um, uh, permittivity. And the final thing in this lecture is the question of quantum computing. That was plan Q in our discussion before. So is quantum computing fi finally here? And the answer is unquestionably yes. So uh, a few years ago already, IBM put out what they call the system Q, which is a 50 qubit uh, quantum computer. Um, what you actually see here is a big freezer that lets us get down to several milli Kelvin, like almost a, 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 a uh, ultimate zero uh, level. Um, the chip is really small, the actual quantum computer somewhere in the middle here, but um, this whole type of a thing is, is just this big uh, refrigerator. Okay, and um, the basic uh, computational unit, which is similar to a bit in classical computing, is called a qubit. And what we need to do is integrate many, many, many of these qubits, uh, thousands or whatever, and we'll get this uh, amazing um, computing power. Well, IBM was able to show in November 2017 that they have a 50 qubit computer, which at that point they were the leaders. Um, Google came strong into the, the game and uh, they put out the, as far as I know, the biggest quantum computer um, up till now in 2018, the bristle cone, which has 72 qubits. Um, there is a lot of uh, um, argument about what exactly is a qubit, what exactly is, uh, is better than the other. Uh, IBM now, because they're kind of behind in the race, they're calling something called quantum volume rather than the number of qubits for what the computing power is. But the, the biggest uh, thing that came out was a few months ago, um, Google um, published a paper in Nature about the Sycamore processor, which is only 54 qubits maybe, but it reached quantum supremacy. What is quantum supremacy? It is the ability of a quantum computer to do a calculation that it would take uh, an infinite amount of time for a classical computer to do, and Google showed that they were able to do this. Um, uh, the paper actually uh, was leaked uh, a few months before, so IBM had time to prepare for this in the fight against uh, Google for quantum supremacy, and uh, immediately after Google published uh, the, the Sycamore processor in, uh, in Nature, they came out with a paper uh, rebuking this and showing that they could, within three days or so, um, calculate what the, uh, the Sycamore had done. Uh, anyway, it, it means that we're on the way. We're doing this. Quantum computing is coming. It is unquestionably a generation that is uh, right in front of us. It's not meant to um, replace classical computing, but sure uh, to do some other things that we have no way of doing now and bring extra power and extra um, uh, capabilities. Okay, so that's uh, it for the scaling, and I hope you enjoyed that. There's a lot of uh, uh, resources for this lecture and Google, and of course this uh, probably by the time you see it will be out of date, but uh, I hope I got it pretty much um, uh, uh, up to date for 2020.